Good morning and welcome to Walking with Jesus Through the Word, one chapter per day. I'm Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church. It is day 515, so we are 150 days into year two, 515 days into our three-year journey through God's Word. Uh, 10, 1095, 1095 days total is what we're working toward by the Lord's grace if he continues to sustain us day by day. We are privileged today to be in two psalms, Psalm 76 and 77. Let's pray and ask the Lord's help as we turn to his word this morning. Father in heaven, thank you for your word, living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating, exposing us before your sight, helping us to deal honestly with you by exposing who we are and showing us who you are and showing us to Christ who reconciles us to you and provides us access to you and peace with you and a relationship with you. So, Father, speak to us by your Holy Spirit through your word today. Write it on our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Psalm 76. To the choir master, with stringed instruments, a psalm of Asaph, a song. In Judah, God is known. His name is great in Israel. His abode has been established in Salem, his dwelling place in Zion. There he broke the flashing arrows, the shield, the sword, and the weapons of war, Selah. Glorious are you, more majestic than the mountains full of prey. The stout-hearted were stripped of their spoil. They sank into sleep. All the men of war were unable to use their hands. At your rebuke, O God of Jacob, both horse and rider lay stunned. But you... You are to be feared. Who can stand before you when once your anger is roused? From the heavens you uttered judgment. The earth feared and was still. When God arose to establish judgment to save all the humble of the earth, surely the wrath of man shall praise you. The remnant of wrath you will put on like a belt. Make your vows to the Lord your God and perform them. Let all around him bring gifts to him who is to be feared, who cuts off the spirit of princes, who is to be feared by the kings of the earth. That is Psalm 76. And the language of Psalm 76 leads us to believe that it was probably written in the aftermath of the king of Assyria and his failed assault on Jerusalem which we studied not that long ago, just a few days ago, in our study through 2 Kings. So the king of Assyria, with a great and mighty army, came and marched through Judah, and then started pressing in on Salem, that's Jerusalem, verse 2, in Zion, that's Mount Zion, which is another way of referring to Jerusalem. And what happened? Well, in one night... The angel of the Lord struck down 185,000 of the men of the army of Assyria. And so what do we see here? The stout-hearted were stripped of their spoil. They sank into sleep. All the men of war were unable to use their hands. At your rebuke, O God of Jacob, both rider and horse lay stunned. Now, sank into sleep is probably a euphemism for they died. They were unable to use their hands. They lay stunned. They were they were just knocked out cold forever by the Lord. That's probably what this is referring to. And so verses five and six in particular, uh, especially with the idea that the Lord is defending Jerusalem, Zion from enemies, it leads many Bible scholars to believe that this psalm was written in that occasion. But even though that was the occasion of its its writing, one of the great things about the Psalms is that they are not limited to just the immediate occasion that prompted them to be written. They carry truths for all of God's people for all time. And the truth here is that God is more majestic, more powerful, more awesome, and more fearsome than all the armies of the world, all the powers of the earth. So verse 7 tells us, you, you are to be feared. Who can stand before you when once your anger is roused? There is no one 
who can truly stand in opposition to the Lord. His power is unopposable. He's undefeated and undefeatable. He is opposed, but he is in fact unopposable in the exercise of his judgment. He exercises his judgment both within time, when he raises up nations and strikes down other nations, and he will execute final judgment at the end of all time, when everyone will bow the knee and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This has a dual message. It has a message for us as God's people, and it has a message for the nations of the world. The message for us as God's people is stand firm, stand strong, stand joyfully confident and expectantly hopeful in the will of God, in the sovereign plan of God. That's where we can stand. That's where we are safe. That's where we can know that God is with us and that God is for us. The message to the nations is repent and believe. God is to be feared by the kings of the earth. He will judge. He will cut off the spirit of princes. No one can oppose him. Just like Assyria, when they tried to attack Jerusalem and it was not yet God's timing, later when God decreed that Jerusalem would go into captivity, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, was able to conquer Jerusalem. But the difference there wasn't that the Assyrians were less fearsome than the Babylonians. The difference was that God had said to the Assyrians, no, it's not time yet. And he said to the Babylonians, yes, it is time yet. And so for the kings of the earth, the message is repent, believe, turn to the Lord, seek him while he may be found. Psalm 77 is written to the choir master, according to Jeduthun, and it is also a psalm of Asaph. I cry aloud to God, aloud to God, and he will hear me. In the day of my trouble, I seek the Lord. In the night, my hand is stretched out without wearying. My soul refuses to be comforted. When I remember God, I moan. When I meditate, my spirit faints, Selah. You hold my eyelids open. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I consider the days of old, the years long ago. I said, let me remember my song in the night. Let me meditate in my heart. Then my spirit made a diligent search. Will the Lord spurn forever and never again be favorable? Has his steadfast love forever ceased? Are his promises at an end for all time? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his compassion? Selah. Then I said, I will appeal to this, to the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. I will ponder all your work and meditate on your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. What God is great like our God? You are the God who works wonders. You have made known your might among the peoples. You, with your arm, redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph, Selah. When the waters saw you, O God, when the waters saw you, they were afraid. Indeed, the deep trembled, the clouds poured out water, the skies gave forth thunder, your arrows flashed on every side, the crash of your thunder was in the whirlwind, your lightnings lighted up the world, the earth trembled and shook, your way was through the sea, your path through the great waters, yet your footprints were unseen. You led your people like a flock, by the hand of Moses and Aaron. So Psalm 76 established for us a, a truth as demonstrated by the downfall of the king of Assyria. And that is that when God defends his people, when God fights for his people, there is no opposing him. He is absolutely victorious. He accomplishes his will. No one can stand against him. He alone causes the whole earth to tremble and be in fear. That is a truth that we can stand in. That's what our application was from that psalm, is stand in that truth. But Psalm 77 gives us a, yeah, but. Yeah, but when we are seeking the Lord, we are crying aloud to God, we are 
remembering God and meditating on God, but we are not getting the help that we feel that our soul so desperately needs. We're not getting the deliverance that we're praying for. We're not getting the answers to prayer that we're longing for. What do we do? What do we do? In seasons of seeming rejection, unanswered prayer, frustrated desires, flattened hopes, what do we do? Do we say, well, God used to be good to me, but now he's not good to me anymore? Do we say, God used to show me his favor, but now he's not showing me his favor anymore? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Verse 9. Has he in anger shut up his compassion? No. But what do we do when it feels like he has? How do we comfort our souls? How do we seek the Lord? How do we renew our faith and our hope in God in those times? And the answer in verse 10 says, I will appeal to this, to the years of the right hand of the Most High. And then what the psalmist says, what Asaph here says, is he's going to ponder and meditate and remember all the things that God has done for his people, the deeds of the Lord, the wonders of old, the work of God. Specifically here in Psalm 77, Asaph turns his heart and mind back to the Exodus, to the time when God, by his right hand and his mighty power, led his people out of bondage in Egypt and brought them into the promised land. So he remembers that. Why does he remember that? He remembers that for a very good reason, and that is, if God was so powerful and so faithful as to do that for his people then, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. There is no shadow of turning with God Most High. He will surely redeem and rescue his people today. And while Asaph looked back on the Exodus, we can look back on the cross. And when we look back on the cross, we can use the language of Romans 8. Romans 8.32 that says, He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies who is to condemn. Christ Jesus is the one who died, more than that who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of God in Christ? So you see, he looks back at the cross and says, God did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. And on the basis of that, he, argue, he reasons by faith. Faith reasons from what God has done in his goodness to what God will do in his goodness. Faith reasons. And it reasons rightly when it's rooted in the character of God and the past actions of God. So God did not spare his son, but gave him up for us all. And so how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? In the future, how's he, how's he going to withhold anything from us? And then that, that leaves us in the present by saying in the present, who can bring any charge against us? God's the one who justifies. Who's going to be able to condemn us? Christ Jesus is the one who died and who raised and who was at the right hand of God who's interceding for us. In the present, no one can separate us from the love of Christ because in the past, Christ gave himself for us. In the future, we're going to receive all good things together with Christ at his second coming. So you see, that's how faith reasons. Faith says, I will appeal to this, to the years of the right hand of the Most High. And even here in Psalm 77, 10, Jesus is the right hand. He sits at the right hand of God Most High. He is the exercise of power for the sake of God's people in his redeeming. Verse 15, you with your arm redeemed your people. If that was true in the Exodus, how much more is it true on the cross? Follow that? You with your arm redeemed your people. If it was true in the Exodus, and it was, in the crossing of the Red Sea, and it was, how much more true is it on the cross? The cross anchors our souls in the goodness of God, in his all-sufficient love for us through all the storms 
of life. Let's pray. Father, thank you for Jesus, our Savior. Thank you for holding us in Christ always. You are good and unfailing, and we love you because you have first loved us. Hold us in your love. Help us to stand secure in Christ and to trust your purposes and your promises for us. Even when we can't see them, even when it seems so hard and so far away, help us to trust that you are the one. You've done it. You will do it. You are doing it for us. All good things through Christ our Savior. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for joining me for Psalm 77. Tomorrow we are going to be back in 2 Kings. Hope you'll join me for that. Have a very blessed day in the Lord. Mm -hmm.